Adulthood is a drag. I can grow up later. I'm having fun while I can. Stay young. Stay wild. Stay free. YOLO. While that proclamation might sound somewhat theatrical, these are in fact fairly stereotypical sentiments in Western youth culture. They are the indulgent notions and sometimes desperate convictions that provide comfort to the transitioning adolescent who's experienced the taste of an adult world and found it a little sour. But what this individual does not yet realize is that the bitter taste of their reality lies not in the advent of adulthood, but in the still childish makeup of their character and perceptions. As we will see, adulthood is not a drag, but the place of ultimate participation. Let's first explore a scenario where such thoughts typically arise. You're a young individual, fresh into university and on the cusp of adulthood. Somewhere between 18 to 20 years of age, you're enjoying the fruits of a growing independence, still supported by the safety net of mum and dad. Suddenly, you're free to party the night away. During the week, on repeat, live how you want and in effect, do what you want. If you don't want to care about something, then don't. If you want to take a stance on the world, do it with righteous certainty. Don't like someone, whatever, move on. Do whatever makes you feel good. It's a new world. But hark, there is more to this scene. With each step ventured onto the land of the grown-up, blooming notions of adulthood begin to whisper their difficult truths. Truths that to you, the inexperienced youth, can seem dark indeed, particularly if they're being reinforced by a smug, know-it-all friends. But for the time being, you're fairly sheltered under the umbrella of student life. You've got at least three years ahead before, by all appearances, the shackles of reality begin to tighten. During this period, you'll probably be told and tell yourself that those things about yourself that are quite imperfect and the aspects of your lifestyle that have recurringly left you on the back foot can wait. You're young. You don't have to grow up yet. You don't have to take things seriously. Adulthood is a renunciation of fun and joy, a relinquishing of freedom and a resignation towards full-time drudgery. Youth, on the other hand, is novelty, passion, freedom, excitement, potential. Youth is something that can be extended well into your 20s and you should be lauded for doing so. But what is youth, really? And for that matter, what does it actually mean to grow up? Approach a mature adult and ask them if they miss their youth, and you'll likely elicit a wistful sigh of remembrance, followed by some form of affirmation. Next, ask if they wish they could return to that time and actually relive their past selves in full. Each person would target a slightly different time in their lives, which most embodies the idea of their youth. For context, I'm meaning around late teens to mid-twenties. I envisage my youth primarily occurring between the ages of 18 to 21. But do those questioned actually want to return to their youth? If life is particularly disastrous at that time, they might, but otherwise, you wouldn't bet on it. Youth, in retrospect, is chaotic, with constant microtransitions. Every year is characterized by some element of personal or contextual development, like entering a new school, trade, or university year, or by an often messy exploration of one's body, mental state, and relationship with others. We crave the fulfillment of experience and revel in our blooming reward system. We seek escape from our new or slowly intensifying issues that plague us as our awareness grows. Drugs and alcohol feature heavily in the rolling credits of life at that time. Youth can also stagnate when pushed past its appropriate temporal limits. A life of avoided personal responsibility and adulting enterprise is one destined for isolation. If you can't simultaneously be good for yourself and others in an adult world, those others will leave you behind. The 30-year-old living in their mother's basement is not enviable. In essence, we are young. We don't yet understand ourselves or the world even if we think we do. Our values, the things that guide our decision-making, are underdeveloped, as are our goals. Many of us don't know what directions we wish to take in life, how to make sacrifices, and from where to derive a sense of purpose. We're barely self-aware 
and haven't explored our own psychological depths or haven't mustered the courage to do so. We struggle to actually be good for ourselves or others. Altogether, it's hardly surprising that these times are often so filled with existential uncertainty. Such feelings are the birthing ground of anxiety, and in some cases, depression. Adulthood, however, which is something like an awakening, a necessary progression beyond the limiting bounds of adolescence, isn't seen as the antidote to suffering of being young, but as a modified continuation of it. If anything, it's something to be put off for as long as possible. Youth and its limiting freedoms hold primacy. We cannot lament being young. For a start, it's unavoidable. More importantly, it is a time of laughter, love, growth and novelty, admittedly more for some than others. But we should be wary about how we let our childish nature carry into the next chapter and perhaps approach that chapter with a little more optimism. Adulthood in itself is not the answer to one's problems, but it's where those answers are to be found. Childhood and youth are like the early stages of an open world video game. You're in a simple area, bounded. You're restricted to what the beginner stage allows you to do, prompted at all turns, barely able to explore, undertake quests, develop skills, learn. Failure is limited, but so is reward. You're not even really playing the game yet. So what happens when we start growing up? Perhaps the most psychologically significant thing we do is form an identity, a critical step in our mental flourishing. Like a flickering candle, our sense of self, our self-awareness, begins to cast a tentative light on the mostly untrammeled reaches of our psyche. We start to see those parts of ourselves that are strong or weak, good or ugly, honest or deceitful. We encounter the searing truth of our nature, if we can face it. Gradually, we formulate a narrative of who we are and juxtapose it against those things we admire. We start to pay attention to what the hell is going on. Our attention nurtures understanding. With understanding comes control, and with control, a bulwark against anxiety. In contrast, individuals who are approaching adulthood but have achieved fewer perceived criteria that define an adult, such as accepting self-responsibility, tend to suffer more symptoms of anxiety and depression. As we pay attention, another key developmental process occurs. Our values, action influences, begin to manifest and order themselves. We figure out what we think to be important or worthwhile, what is personally significant. Optimally, truth ranks highly on this list. That gives us things to aim at and makes our existence a little clearer. Values and identity have their origins in our childhood, but only in adulthood can they really begin to contribute to the antidote of our suffering. The passion of youth is often contrasted against the constraints of adulthood, and I think unfairly so. Adult, working life is typecasted as being something tangibly different to youthful experience. A place where dreams go to die, the sun has passed its zenith, so to speak. This sentiment is subtly captured in the common phrase, I'm going to spend the rest of my life working anyway. How should we think about this likely fact? It's true that why it's true that we have to sacrifice the present for the future, but this has always been the case and always will be. That sentiment is based on the presupposition that work is in some way a product of industrial modernity rather than a timeless inevitability. A focus on the present alone is not sufficient to keep the entropy of life at bay. Tomorrow has always been built from today. To indulge the idea it should or could be otherwise is childish. Furthermore, what is work? What could that look like? And what about the life it supports? Our choices are open. We should not be so quick to divorce our labors, personal or paid, from the potential of achievement and meaning. A similar platitude takes the following form. Live while you're young. From personal experience, this phrase is only uttered right before consuming drugs or alcohol and partying the night away. So what then is living taken to mean here? Living is a brief breadth of experience fundamentally characterized by hedonistic activity. 
At its bottom line, living in this context is to ignore responsibility, to calendar one's problems for a later date, and deny any need for personal development. Living means to peak one's experience for a few short hours. On the contrary, real living is to try and keep one's baseline high for the long-term game. You do not stop living beyond the stages of youth. If anything, the world is larger and your choices are more diverse in line with your maturity. We may spend the majority of our adult lives working, but we can also spend that time working for something or towards something. Whether recreational or as a source of income, we have the choice to pursue those things we find interesting, challenging, and important. Positive emotion and reward are fundamentally found in what we find personally meaningful. The expedient pales compared to the long-term quest. Maybe I'm wasting my young years. But what are your young years for? If they're currently characterized by a job you find depressing, then you should probably do something about that. Are you framing that job in an overly cynical manner? Yes? Then perhaps you could do something about that too. No? Looking for a new job is probably a good idea. But are you necessarily wasting your young years? This conception often misses the point. Certainly exists to revel in the vigor of youth and capitalize on the potential it offers, which is exactly why it's there to lay the foundation for the years to come. So why are you wasting them? Maybe, but not necessarily because you're working. If you are, it's likely because you're not tending to the things that build a life. Relationships, hobbies, values, health, competencies, adventure, work, routine. You might think that entering a regular routine is the place where dreams go to die. On the contrary, this is the place where dreams are built. At this point, a critic might point out that I haven't addressed the hardships that come with adulthood. Death, betrayal, loss, failure, rejection, poverty, illness, depression, anxiety, pain. The list goes on. Some, if not all of these things, will inevitably weave in and out of life. It's a reality that isn't going to change and grasping frantically to a state of youth and immaturity won't help. If anything, it'll just make any suffering you encounter worse. Adulthood, maturity, when pursued properly, will bolster you in the face of that suffering. Do not lament the onset of adulthood. It is where we begin to become who we could be and where well-being, personal and shared, can thrive. It is where we leave the training grounds to play the game in full.